StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Renee Paquette's Sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's Last Match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at RicFlair'sLastMatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. Well, they did announce today at 6.05 Eastern the final match of Ric Flair, Ric Flair's last match, which is taking place July 31st, Nashville Municipal Auditorium, Fight TV. It is going to be Ric Flair and Andrade versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal in a tag team match. They shot an angle where Flair was leaving the building and Jay Lethal went up to him and he was very upset that he'd helped train Flair all these months. And as it turned out, he wasn't even on the card. And they got into an argument. Jay Lethal attacked him, punched him in his surgically repaired stomach, and he was giving him a beating and Jeff Jarrett showed up and Jeff Jarrett tried to help. But then Jeff Jarrett was upset about Flair's reaction to him helping him. So he attacked Ric Flair and... Flair juiced. He's bleeding everywhere. There's blood all over his shirt. Karen Jarrett's there. Of course, she's in white, so she's got blood all over her dress. And uh, yeah. that was the angle to Jeff. Uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff used Karen's shoe on Ric Flair's head to to juice him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was an old old school angle, um, and uh, you know, I mean, it's. <laughs> It's what it was. I hope everybody. I hope everything turns out well for the show. That's about the best I could say. Is I hope it. I hope it turns out well, and I hope it's. Uh, it's fitting for a Ric Flair last match, and I hope that everybody gets uh, something special out of it because uh, Ric Flair's last match should be something special. As far as, like I said, the key thing probably really isn't the match itself. I mean, they have. Um, you know, Jay Lethal's good. Andrade's good. They'll be able to carry the match. Rick will be able to come in and, uh, you know, do some of his trademark stuff. The undercard's really good, but the key is is the presentation of, uh, just the presentation of Rick's last match and really the post-match, I think, is the most important. And hopefully that, you know, the most important thing, I guess, is that uh, nobody gets hurt. hurt. Um you know, Andrade's injured, but, you know, I mean, look, he's only, he's only got one chance in his lifetime to team with Ric Flair, and this is it. So he's going to he's gonna do it. And Rick is hurt, but this is it, you know. I mean, Rick's worked hurt before. And, uh, you know, um, when you're training to get ready for a match at 73, you know, I mean, it's you can get injuries. And hopefully, you know, he gets through it. It's, uh, you know, the injury thing. You know, I mean, it's it, it does, like I said, you know, remind me of Luthez who went in there and, you know, he got hurt right away in the match and hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, and uh, hopefully that, uh, you know, hopefully it's everything that it could be. Um, I'm not, you know, there's so many different ways to look at it and, um, but it's happening. And if it's going to happen, I just hope nobody gets hurt, especially with Rick. You know, the um, the idea of somebody wrestling with a pacemaker obviously should worry everyone everyone involved, uh, but he has trained for months with that, and, you know, so he's, you know, it's, uh, and and he's okay, you know, I mean, it's, except for the foot injury, and hopefully it all works out very well, and uh, it's uh, going to be a very unique show. And I think that the undercard's probably going to be really good because you got all these different promotions involved. The politics of the main event is very interesting. Um, you got two wrestlers from WCW, and you've got a senior vice president from WWE on the same match, which to a degree probably tells you um, the respect Rick has. And also, you know, that... It's a really weird time. Not a really weird time. It's probably a better time in wrestling because in, you know, in another era, something like this probably wouldn't have been able to happen. And, uh, you know, as far as Jeff being in there, Jeff's one of Conrad's podcasting guys. He's going to be safe to work with Rick. 
and he knows how to do this kind of angle so he did it and um you know other guys could have been in there they could have you know whatever but there's nothing wrong and it's it's like it, it really didn't matter the opponents or anything like that the draw is the same the draw is rick and now the idea is just, just to get the best match possible and put on the best show possible and uh you know that's that's the situation but uh obviously tony khan okayed his guys working with a you know wwe guy um and wwe i mean with jeff the thing with jeff is is that jeff doesn't have a talent contract so legally even though he's actually a vice president of the company um based on he he can wrestle this match i mean i know a lot of people think that because conrad in the past had booked wwe guys including rick um to do major things at his conventions and then wwe pulled them that that is going to happen here but uh that's not going to happen this has all been worked out the rest of the show has josh alexander versus jacob fatu for the impact title got jordan grace versus diana parazzo and rachel ellering three-way for the impact knockout title Ricky and his son, Kerry Morton, with Robert Gibson versus Brian Pillman Jr. and Brock Anderson with Arn Anderson. We got uh, Ray Phoenix, Laredo Kid, Taurus, and Bandito in a four-way. David Richards and Eddie Edwards versus Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin. Killer Cross versus Davey Boy Smith Jr. Clark Connors versus Ren Narita. And the Briscoes versus the Von Ericks. So that is the lineup for the Yeah, some of that stuff. Show. The the, the uh, Eddie Edwards, Davey Richards, and Saban and Shelley match should be great. And uh, the the AAA match, you know, I the, it, it's essentially, with the exception of um, um, the Kingo not being in it, it's the same match as at the last Triple Mania um, with Ray Phoenix and Taurus and... Uh, Bandito and um, uh, Laredo, Kid, Laredo Kid, right? So those guys had an absolutely incredible match at the last Triple Mania. That one is going to... They'll tear the house down. So if you want to see a match that tears the house down, that'll be it. Um, you know, the uh, Machine Guns and Wolves, obviously they're going to have a great match. Um, and some of the other ones, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure every match will be great, but Clark Connors and Ren Narita is going to be as far as um that's going to be a a great technical wrestling match and uh you know they're both super workers so yeah i mean you you'll, you'll get your share of good wrestling on the show um and if you don't want to see rick then uh you know don't, you know the show's not for you and um i'm not thrilled that it's happening in the sense i mean it's like i like it I don't say I like it, but I like the idea of a farewell for Jim Crockett promotions, even though, you know, it's 34 years ago that the company folded. But that's a nice touch for some people, because like David Crockett said, they did not get, you know, they just kind of sold the company and that was it. And it was a company that had started in the 1930s and was a very instrumental part of several states in wrestling and really you know for a period in in the late 70s and into the early 80s mid eight early and mid 80s you could argue i mean as far as during the territorial era it was probably at times the strongest territory in the country um talent wise match wise um and um you know a lot of guys made you know for the time very good money um it was very hard you know, very, very hard schedule, but, um, you know, it was, uh, in, in that part of the country, it was a very big deal for years and years. They had a very strong territory. Jim Crockett did a great job, Hall of Fame promoter. His father, um, you know, built a very, you know, his father was, a you know, promoted not just the wrestling, but, um, Harlem Globetrotters and, um, you know, all kinds of other events, baseball, you know, I mean, his father promoted everything in the world and they promoted baseball and wrestling, minor league baseball. And, um, you know, they, um, and then, uh, they sold because they had a couple of bad years and the thing went down and, you know, it was fighting Vince, obviously. Um, they thought they would be the ones who could fight Vince and they were the best equipped to do so. But, um, things changed in business 
you had to pay for TV and um, the, the, the economics no longer worked that they were working with. And um, I know some people think that, uh, you know, had they not expanded, that they would have been able to save it. But the regional territory, they, they've lost all their talent if that, if that happened. Um, there was no way to, there was no way to compete with Vince McMahon for, with a regional promotion. Um, those days were over. And the only people who could compete with them were obviously Turner Broadcasting. And they competed with them until the people involved there, you know, just, you know, you know what happened. They just, they produced a product that nobody wanted to see. And they've spent decades trying to blame other people for their own failures. But that's, that's, I mean, that's kind of the nature of the business too. But um, I hope that, uh, I hope that this is, I hope David Crockett, um, kind of gets closure i hope um i hope nobody gets hurt um up and down the card i hope rick is okay and uh i hope that they create a scene at the end of the show that is worthy of you know the last match of you know one of the most enduring stars and one of the greatest stars the business has ever had hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.